Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, our production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out new important news. With us today, Matt Hawkins from Harborside Inc. Trades on the CSC under HBOR, and for our friends of yes, under HBORF. For those who are new to the story, you're going to love the Harborside story. First of all, generally speaking, they're California-based, vertically integrated, fully licensed cannabis company in three primary segments, retail, cultivation, and wholesale. Their retail, Harborside retail operations command 3% of California's entire retail market to let you know how significant they are. And that translated into for full year 2020, because more than just lip service, revenue, $63.4 million, up 29%. Adjusted EBITDA, $7.4 million, which is about a $60 million turnaround from the year before, which had a loss of $8.9 million. That was back in 2019. The company also has put out guidance about 2021. They're expecting between $68 and $72 million in revenue and adjusted EBITDA around 15 to 17%. But that may change as a result of big acquisition they announced. And of course, they put out Q1. So let's talk about all that. Matt, welcome back. Hey, thanks, George. Appreciate you having me. I need to hire you. You're such a good, you're a, I love how you talk about us so positively. This is great. <laughs> easy to do, man. When you guys are hitting out of the park, you make, you make my job easy. Uh, you know, let's, we talk about how you guys had a great full year and, and you just put a, you just put a Q1. So generally speaking, we'll talk more about Q1 because that just came out. How do you feel about the result that you guys punched out for full year, for, for full year 2020 to be hitting your numbers and making such drastic improvements on so many, on so many parts. Yeah, we, uh, I mean, 2020, obviously on one hand was challenging, but on the other, as we've talked about before, uh, you know, there was times where COVID was for the cannabis industry, a, a blessing in disguise. And we were able to stay open being deemed essential in California. Um, and, you know, sales, skyrocketed in the late first quarter and second quarter as a result. And then it and really just kind of continued throughout the year. And, you know, a lot of that is uh, there's, I think there was a conversion of the illicit market going on behind the scenes. Um, in the meantime, we were, um, you know, operationally became a lot more efficient in 20 than we did, uh, than we were in 19 and 18. Um, and we were continuing that into 21. Do you expect now with everything, because that was a surprise, right? A lot of us thought with COVID that was going to slow almost everything down on the planet, especially real world, what I like to call real world. But given how well things went in 2020, what's the general feeling for 2021 now that California is wide open again? Uh, do you, are you guys expecting an even bigger bump than you probably would have thought? You know, I, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, I think things are, are normalized, but, but I think it still remains to be seen how the, the rest of the year plays out. Uh, I think we're more excited about the, the focus we have on, uh, on our business plan, which is, you know, when we, when we took over the board back in November, uh, you know, my firm Entourage Effect Capital, which is a large shareholder in, in the company. And obviously we're very, very active in the, uh, uh, us, uh, uh, the legalized landscape in the United States from a private investment standpoint. You know, our focus has been to drive significant scale at Harborside to become the preeminent single state operator through accretive M&A activity. And so you saw that with the Sublime announcement. Uh, we also had, you know, a lot of things in the first quarter, we were able to announce a, uh, a credit facility that's that looks, hell, it looks more like a something you would see in the widget business versus cannabis. We had, you know, attractive rates from a, from a, uh, from a bank. I can't mention the name, but it's a, uh, a traditional banking source. Um, we were able to successfully close on a $30 million plus pipe. Um, we were, you know, we, we obviously have announced the, the sublime uh, transaction, which further builds out our, our wholesale uh, and, and, uh, and branded product portion of the business. And we're going to continue our focus from an uh, M&A standpoint on, on all three phases of the business, uh, wholesale, manufacturing, and retail. Um, let's talk about both those fronts. So first, let's start. I want to get into Sublime, but first, let's talk about Harborside pre-Sublime and Q1. Uh, you guys, you guys uh, registered about $12.95 in gross revenue and gross profit. 
of a uh, of 5.8 of 5.82 million. Uh, talk to us about the Q1 result and if if that meet if that met or exceeded your expectations. Yeah, I mean, I think it met it. I mean, obviously, as as non-executive chairman, I want to see as, as as much top line and bottom line as I can. But we're you know we're happy with the results. Um, but like I said, it's the results are one thing, but but the 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 movement of the needle of our business plan is is as important, and we and we were able to accomplish that as well. Now the big news is the uh, the agreement to acquire Sublime, I and mean, this is no small deal. It's essentially I'm rounding up here, forty five million dollars US. Uh, that's that's no that's no walk in the park, uh, uh, but it's an iconic award winning uh, California California based brand. Um, Let's talk about that. What what inspired that acquisition? Sure. So um, Harborside traditionally has been um, wholesale, uh, uh, you know, raw material being grown in our in our at our state of the art uh, cultivation facility in Salinas, and then obviously with our uh, you know retail outlets in California, with you know led by our flagship in Oakland, which is the oldest dispensary and, and one, if not the oldest, one of the oldest in the world uh, in, in, in Oakland. Uh, but we had a manufacturing gap there and, and we needed to, to, to close that gap and Sublime does that for us. Sublime has uh, significant manufacturing capabilities, plus they bring uh, the number one pre-rolled uh, brand in, um, uh, in California to the, to the table. So uh, the uh, the Fuzzies brand is a, just a remarkable brand for us, and we're excited to have that uh, as part of our portfolio now. Uh, let's talk about the transaction terms. You know, uh, you know the the acquisition, what kind of multiple you're paying for, it, be, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, we're paying less than one times revenue, uh, which we think is a um, uh, you know obviously a, 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 a you know a nice multiple for, from a, from a buy side standpoint. Um, but we're also getting a lot more than just, um, uh, manufacturing capabilities and, and great brands. We're getting uh, a world cap class operator. Um, uh, you know, the, the CEO of, 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 uh, of sublime comes from a, um, supply chain management background that includes a stint at Amazon. Um, Amr's just a, he's a stud and, and it's a, so it also fills a void in our, um, in our management team, um, that, that we're, you know, excited to have him on board. And, and, and Harborside has actually been a customer of Sublime. For That's many, right. For, and you don't see that very often, right? You don't see a customer well, buying out the, yeah, uh, yeah, I, guess, I, I guess you go, but, but, you know, let's face it, the, the California cannabis market is not only actually the entire Canvas market in general is is cottage like in nature, but damn near incestuous. And so, you know, there's going to be times where companies are going to come together that are, you know, almost like part of the family in terms of where they are in your supply chain. And so, this was no different. And we and we 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 know the company as a result. And so, it, it just made it a uh, a no brainer uh, once the opportunity presented itself. Their distribution system to over 500 dispensaries. How much of that is overlap with uh, where Harborside is already, and how much of that represents you know new ground? Uh, a lot of it's accretive, so that's another important right. part of our underwrite is to make sure that was the case. And uh, you know we're excited to to just begin the the integration process of of of, of, of bringing that distribution network together. Devil's advocate, uh, big acquisitions are always great. But we do know that you know, sometimes it's tough to create the synergies. It's tough to bring two strong independent companies together uh, and to create, you know, that's the magic, right? To be able to create one big, even better company. What kind of synergies do you expect uh, to be a creative to Harborside and all this? How are you guys going to come together and make both your businesses even stronger? So, I mean, as you know, George, that the, uh, you know, putting together a public company um, M&A transaction takes a long, long time. So um, a lot of this has been done on the front end. I mean, working with Amr and the uh, Sublime team on, you know, planning for, you know, post-closing is already in the works. And so um, private transactions can, can take a little bit, 
you know, it's a little bit quicker. So post closing, you have, I feel like you have more, um, you know, more wood to chop from an integration standpoint. Whereas we've really been working on that as we went along with negotiating the definitive documents. And so I feel like we've got a pretty good game plan of how to get that accomplished post closing. Yeah, and it helps that you've had this long standing relationship, right? Because sometimes you get two companies come together. It's, uh, you know, Harborside wants to buy George Com, this really attractive company on paper, but you don't know the culture at the end of the day. You just know on paper, George Com is a great company. How much, how big of an advantage of it is it that you guys have had this relationship for so long and therefore you kind of understand each other's cultures and, you, and, and there's, and there's easier to get along. It, it's, it, it, it's, you can't, you can't minimize it. I mean, it's, it's incredibly important. And I would say that that's the benefit we have as an investment firm, knowing a lot of these companies already that can help, you know, with the underwrites at the, at the, at the, company level of Harborside to the extent that we can, um, but also, you know, the other opportunities that are in the pipeline for Harborside, you know, we know those companies too. And so they're either part of the supply chain already, or like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a cottage like industry. And so it's, it's, it's not like you're, you know, like uh, I'll use a widget company again. I mean, you know, widget companies need to grow through acquisition as well. And sometimes they don't know their competitors very well. And sometimes they don't know their suppliers very well. And so uh, cannabis is different that way. Um, back to Harborside, bigger picture. Uh, look, in February, you, you guys have had some other major developments as well. Uh, let's talk about that. In February, you close an upside private placement, 35 million. Uh, like you said earlier, $12 million credit facility um, uh, with a commercial bank lender that you, you couldn't really name. Um, you know, what other things happen that, that you think is, that investors should know that's just making Harborside stronger? Well, I wish I could talk more about what's going on behind the scenes, but, but obviously we, we can. So do we. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, suffice it to say, we're incredibly excited about what's going to happen here in the next quarter, quarter and a half. Um, there's, I mean, look, let's face it. Harborside is a, uh, there's no reason why our stock is trading where it's at right now. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves just yeah. from where it is right now. But, you know, we anticipate, you know, post-closing with uh, Sublime and hopefully a couple of others that, that our uh, revenue guidance is going to go through the roof. Uh, but obviously we can't say anything about that until we get further down the line. Uh, but since, since you're since you're bringing the stock price, it's a bit of a head scratcher for me too. Do you think that may be more related to the fact that cannabis, the entire industry, is still going through a little bit of uh, you know, it's almost like they need to get reacquainted with investors because the big companies really let everybody down, and now the market's trying to sort out. All right, forget about size. You know, the really big. You know, we we won't name them, but the mega companies. Is, it, is the industry or is it just, is the industry still trying to figure out who the harbor sides are the guys are giving real results versus who yeah the big guys and the George comms are that were just spinning news there's there's no doubt about it and um, the closer we get to you know some type of quasi legalization here in the states uh, you know the more you're gonna see I think you know, activity at the investment level that won't just be retail investors and mm -hmm. you know as you know george retail investors sometimes get skittish more than institutional folks do and um as uh you know as a, as a chairman of a company that's that's directly impacted by that i you know i long for the day to where we can have more institutional minded investors that will you know that aren't um you know, aren't scared of this and, 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 and aren't scared of the bumpy rides because I mean, cannabis, I mean, my God, if we look back for, you know, since 2017, 18, I mean, the, the bumps in the road have been severe in cannabis and it's not just for, you know, single state operators like, like Harborside, but the big multi-state operators and then the, you know, the, the licensed producers in Canada as well. So it, it's going to, I think it's going to remain be bumpy until we get some, you know, a better feeling on when, uh, some type of legalization will occur in the States, meaning that uh, whatever triggers the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange to open up. Because when that happens, 
billions of dollars are going to flood into the industry. And that'll be a good thing for companies like, like Harborside. And I'm glad you brought that up because I started thinking to myself, uh, is this why, because you come more from, you come much more from the capital market side of things. Right. Is this why you guys are really beefing up Harborside? Is this, it, there must be a thesis and this is my assumption and you can confirm it or not. What do you think? Up. What do you think, George? Well, it's got to be that you guys are beefing up because are you expecting when, when it gets federalized, when, when we finally get over the last legal hurdle, that big money is going to come flying into the industry that otherwise has to kind of stay away from it for now. Well, let me, let me, let me answer side. Yeah, let me, let me answer it this way. Everything we do as an investment firm in Entourage Effect Capital is about building scale in advance of some type of legalization because that's the name of the game. The, the entire market's going to change and turn, be turned on its head with the amount of capital that'll, that's going to be rushing into this space. And it's undeniable. And so the more scale we can build across the, our portfolio of assets, Harborside, no different then the more money we can make for our investors. And obviously that's our, that's our goal. I've got to think Harborside is going to look like just this one big, beautiful West coast anchor to, you know, when that day comes, someone's going to say, we need that anchor out there. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, get it. and maybe, and maybe if we can do what we say we're going to do and, and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we have an exit prior to legalization to, somebody that's in place right now, the, the big MSOs that, that want to add a California jewel to their portfolio in advance of what they know is coming, which is exactly what we're talking about here. And so then, you know, then we see a potential double re-rate there and how great would that be? So is that, is that your message to shareholders? I, I know just to be clear, we're not giving advice, but is that your no, message? No, that's not my message to shareholders. That's my, that's my, that, that is what as a firm and entourage effect capital, our goals are. And it just so happens that Harborside is in our portfolio. Yeah. And you're not worried about, I mean, you're always, you're, you're always uh, on top of it and you're always watching, but you're not overly concerned about valuations today because you're really building this for that setup. And if that's the case, Matt, what are you guys thinking? We know you don't have a magic ball, but you know, when obviously you, you guys are talking to all the right people, what's your sense of, if you have any, of when it does go legal federal, you know, any, do you think the Biden administration is the, is the administration? Do you think it's uh, something for next year? Cause they got bigger priorities the first couple of years. What, what are you guys thinking? What's your thesis there? I, I mean, I, look, I, I'm not going to give a crystal ball answer, but what I will say is compared to this time last year, I would say that I think we shaved a couple of three years off the timeline. Um, and, and so whether that's in two, three, four, five, seven years, I really don't know. But I think the bigger thing to look at is the number of states that are now legal on the East Coast. Uh, the approval rating that's, that, that is across the nation is skyrocketed. It's become a bipartisan issue. It's not, it's not a Democrat or Republican issue. It just even Republican states are now saying, wait a minute, this thing exists. Why don't we just tax and regulate it? And so uh, it just makes all the sense in the world. And the sooner we can come together, um, you know, or the legislative bodies can come together to realize that it's, you know, something will happen because, you know, you're starting to see a little bit of bipartisan activity in the, uh, in the legislative bodies and, and this would be no different. And so I don't, I don't think it's a crazy long time, but I also don't think it's tomorrow. Matt, congratulations on what you guys have achieved. I mean, you're delivering, you're building, and can't wait to see how much more, because I got to figure that Sublime is not the end of the M&A trail. Uh, it's just another, it's just another, uh, am I right about that? It's not, this isn't the end of I M&A. I can't tell you, but just, you, you keep talking. <laughs> uh, 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 congratulations, man. You guys are doing, you guys are doing amazing things, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. All right, George. Thank you, bud. Take care. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform to Matt Hawkins of Harborside. Trades on the CSC and the stock symbol HBOR. And uh, for our friends of US under HBORF, for those of you new to the story, because you might be seeing these big numbers, you're seeing our social media marketing, because uh, it's hard to deny these numbers, right? At the end of the day, that's what separates the real companies from the pretenders. Uh, and you want to know more, you want to do a deeper dive, then get to Agoracom, 
get to the harbor side profile page because we've got it all neatly laid out for you in a good two three minute overview to get a great understanding of the company and then from there link over the harbor side website do your deep dive due diligence because there's no doubt you've heard matt say it but i'm going to say it we have no doubt about the growth of cannabis uh in this decade it's it's going to skyrocket there's no stopping it and you got to decide who the winners are going to be and hopefully discovered your next great small cap cannabis company have a fantastic day everyone see you next time hey guys this video is over but don't forget to help your company by liking it and then leaving a comment below and then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel so you don't ever miss another great agoracom small cap video